Greetings folks. In this video I'm going to be talking about the connections to the SpeedyB F405 wing board. It, it seems this board is going to be very popular with first time flight control board users so it's uh, probably a good idea to uh, talk about the connections from more of a, a beginner's perspective. It can be a bit confusing uh, to the uninitiated and someone pointed out to me recently that there's nowhere on the board that tells you where to plug the ESCs into so um, I'll go through all the connections uh, in a bit more detail and a bit more basic explanation hopefully. Now just before we get into it uh, I'll talk about some of the terminology around flight control board inputs because we'll need to refer to these later on. Uh, first of all there's the UART Universal Asynchronous Receive and Transmit Serial Input and they have pins labelled RX, TX, 5 volts and ground and it's important to know that the RX pin on the device connects to the TX pin on the flight control board and the TX pin on the device connects to the RX pin on the flight control board and they are used for uh, devices such as the RC receiver, GPS and video transmitters use some of it as well. And the other main input is the inter integrated circuit or I2C or I2C uh, and that is labelled SDA, SCL, 5 volts and ground uh, and that's used for typically used for magnetometer or compass and uh, digital airspeed sensor. There are also ADC inputs which are analog inputs and they're used for things like analog RSSI and analog airspeed sensors. Now if we look at the specs for this board we have six UARTs, one I2C and four ADC inputs. I'll give you a quick overview first just so we know what we're talking about. So down here we have battery cable and ESC cables in and out there. We have the USB board there for plugging into your computer. We have a um, pin set down here. We have S bus receiver, crossfire receiver, a uh, couple of motor pins and uh, servo pins all along there, all the PWM outputs. Across the top row here are all the LED outputs and the bottom row are the uh, peripheral inputs. So we've got DJI, FPV, GPS and compass, analog video transmitter and analog camera. These two connectors on the side are for digital and analog airspeed sensor. Uh, the digital one is an I2C connection. You can see the SDA and the SCL there and the analog is an analog to digital converter connection. There are a few spare connectors here, they're just for other purposes, uh, other UARTs and there and there. Uh, we don't really need to worry about them for the moment. If we flip over on the back you can see exactly where to solder on your battery positive, ESC positive and battery negatives there. We'll pull the board apart and have a look at the bottom board which is the power distribution board. So most wing flight control boards will have a power distribution board that sort of takes the input voltage which is 2S to 6S or 8 volts up to 24 volts and divides up the power for different purposes because the board itself can't use the full battery voltage it would just blow up the chips. So if we look at the layout of the power distribution board we'll start up the top here we've got the video transmitter and camera BEC BEC just means battery eliminator circuit, uh, it just means vo uh, voltage regulator. By default it's set at 9 volts but you can change that to either 12 volts or 5 volts using these little uh, solder pads here. But if your video transmitter and camera can handle 9 volts just leave it as default. This one up here is the voltage regulator for the flight control board itself so there's no changes we can make to that. And this one here is the BEC for the servos. So that again you can choose which voltage you want that to be at. By default it's at 5 volts um, but by bridging the top two I think you can get 7.2 volts and by bridging the bottom two there you can get 6 volts. Now because the board has a good BEC for servos inbuilt you don't need to plug in the red wire that comes from the ESC signal cable. So the ESC has a built-in BEC usually, voltage regulator, which produces 5 volts to power your servos usually if you don't have a flight control board. Uh, but as I said, the flight control board has its own BEC for the servos. So this red wire, which would normally supply 5 volts for the servos, you don't want to plug that into the board because uh, 
Uh, that would be sort of two competing power supplies coming into the board. So you need to pull out that red plug, terminate it, keep it out of the way, and only plug in the signal and ground wires from the ESC. So this is the flight control board. Uh, so it has the main chip there, a little SD card holder there, um, connectors for the top board as well, and the this is where you solder all your pins on. Now, as well as these JST connectors here, we have sort of uh, the connections all replicated in pads along here. So you can direct solder onto these pads if you want to, or just use the supplied cables to plug into the connectors. And the top board here is the uh, wireless communication board, has all the um, labels on it as well. Okay, we're all back together again. Now let's talk about what we connect where. So first off, we'll go for the receivers. Uh, now there are a couple of different spots to plug receivers in. The first set of pins here is for an SBUS receiver. You can see SBUS written there. And the other sort of receiver is a, a Crossfire or Express LRS receiver. And this set of pins here is UART1. You can see TX1, RX1, 4.5 uh, volts and ground. It tells you that it's UART1. First of all, let's talk about an SBUS receiver. Here I have an SBUS receiver. That's an RX6R. This is the S bus cable coming out of here. So to connect that up, you would just plug that straight into the S bus connections there, getting the polarity around the right way, of course. Now, if you're using S bus, this is on UART2. So when the board's connected to the configurator, you would need to go to the ports tab and the RX section and click serial RX on UART2. That just makes sure that S bus is active. And in the receiver tab, you will need to choose SBUS. Now, if we have an Express LRS receiver, so that will have four cables, instead of connecting to the SBUS, we now connect this one here to UART1. So here we have my connector there, and I will just connect that into UART1 like that. And again, I would go to the ports tab in the configurator, and in the RX section, I would click Serial RX for UART1. And you would have to choose CRSF in the receiver page as well. All right, so that's the receivers. Now we'll talk about GPS. So the GPS connection is up here. That is UART3. You can see the RX3 and TX3. Now this is a UART and an I2C connection. We've got the SCL and the SDA connections there uh, because some GPSs have a magnetometer or a compass built in. And Compass usually connects via I squared C or I2C, and GPS usually connects via UART. With fixed wing flight control boards, you really shouldn't connect the Compass anyway. GPS can do everything you need to do with heading and direction. Compass will just confuse it. So even if you do have a Compass on board, your GPS, you shouldn't connect it to, to the flight control board. And when you connect the board to the configurator, you would need to check that GPS is selected on the on UART3. And in configuration, you would need to turn use GPS for navigation on as well. And then up on the top of the configurator screen, you should see the GPS, little GPS icon show up. Now, if it's red, it probably means that you have the RX and TX the wrong way around. And if you go to the GPS screen, you you'll see the count number sitting at zero and not moving. Um, so you may need to switch that around just to make sure you've got the RX connected to the TX and TX connected to the RX. Uh, and then you should see the GPS symbol go blue up on top of the screen and you should see the, the count increasing in the GPS, uh, GPS page. So that's how you know your GPS is connected. Now let's talk about FPV connections. This is my analog setup. I have a Runcam Phoenix 2 camera and a little Esheen 200 milliwatt video transmitter. Connections coming through here and I've just connected them up to the supplied cables as well. Now, I have video transmitter here and camera here. For the video transmitter, we have nine volts, ground, TX5 and VTX. Now to get the video transmitter working, all we really need is the power, ground and video signal. Uh, some video transmitters have a fourth wire that you can connect to this TX5 pin which allow flight control board control of the video transmitter. And then in the configurator, uh, in the ports tab, you would enable 
smart audio or tramp or whatever the protocol is that the video transmitter uses for flight control board control. But uh, basically that's not on all video transmitters, only, only some of them. So we'll just plug the video transmitter in here. My video transmitter doesn't have all of those things. Now the camera, we have voltage, ground, camera or video signal again and not connected basically. So even though they've prov provided a four pin plug there, it's not actually using that, that final pin there. So uh, we'll just plug the voltage, ground and video signal in there. And remember these two are getting nine volts. So you have to make sure your camera and video transmitter can handle the voltage that you've selected on, your, uh, on the BEC that we showed before. Okay, so that's analog. Now we'll go for DJI, Digital HD. This is a Cadex Vista and Cadex camera there. Now something to know about these DJI Air units, they can also act as an SBUS uh, RC receiver. So if you have the DJI, DJI transmitter, you can control your plane uh, using this as the receiver as well. You can see another two little pads there. Uh, it's an SBUS receiver and the ground, but uh, I don't have the a DJI controller so we're just going to ignore that. So we need 9 volts on ground and uh, RX and TX connection to the uh, air unit. On my air unit I have DuPont style connectors so I can connect them into pins but uh, we'll need to make up a uh, adapter cable something like this that I can plug my peripherals into. Um, so we have the 9 volts and ground and RX and TX coming into that plug there. Uh, and that would plug into this one, which is UART5. All we need to get the air unit working is the 9 volts and the ground. Uh, but if we connect the RX and TX, then the flight control board can sort of keep the output power low until the board is armed uh, to control temperature a little bit. And we'll also get some elements we can include on the OSD in the uh, DJI goggles too. So that's why you connect the RX and TX into that one there. And if you're connecting the RX and TX, then you would go into the ports tab, UART5 and enable in the peripherals, DJI FPV VTX. Now connecting the motors or the ESC, uh, as I said, we would only connect the signal on the ground. We don't need the uh, red 5 volt wire coming from the ESC. Uh, and that connects into S1 and S2 if you have two motors. Uh, or just S1 if you have one motor. And you can see that little section there, a uh, couple of lines separated from the rest of the PWM pins. So we just plug that one into there. And then the servos plug into S3, S4, S5, etc. If you have a flying wing, then there'll just be two servos, left elevon and right elevon. And if you have uh, a conventional plane, then they would also plug into S5, F6, S6, and maybe with a pan servo, S7. I'll show you that sort of stuff on the configurator. That will tell you exactly where to plug things into on the board. Now, if we connect the board up to the configurator and go to the mixer page, uh, then you can see this line here, output mapping shows you exactly where to plug things into. S1 for motor one, S3, S4, S5 for servos. Now, if we want to add another motor, that'll pop up in S2 here. If we Add a new motor, add a new mixer rule. You can see motor two has popped up on S2. If we change the mixer preset to flying wind, then you can see we'll get servo one on S3 and servo two on S4. So it kind of does the work for you. It tells you exactly where to plug things in. So that's about it. I hope that helps to clear up the confusion about where to plug things into the SpeedyB board and flight control boards generally. Hope you have a good FPV experience. Happy flying and see you in the next video.